Plantagenet. What is a man? By Mike Walker. So, a forest, deep and dark and mysterious. The wind stirring the trees. Within that forest, deep and dark and mysterious, the beast moves fast, very fast. Faster than a charging horse. Weighs around 30 stone. The tusks on the lower jaw permanently sharpened by those on the upper jaw. Even the wolves leave this beast alone. Its only enemy... Come on! Come on! I've been waiting all day. All those bloody boys still in bed with their hands on their cogs. A family, then. Like any other... Perhaps. I was here before you, Father. I can smell it. He's out there somewhere. I think you'll get him, boy. More likely get the pox off some... Shut up, Geoffrey. Ow! Get off! Tell him to leave off, Father. I'll tell you to get your ass in a saddle, boy, or you'll be left behind. Well, you know, Dad, boars, I can take them or leave them. God's take! Where did I ever get such a milksop? Same place you got the rest of us. Oh, how you decided to join us. Well, someone's got to stick that pig. It's mine. Not if I get there first, Father. That's it. Have it each other and I'll get the beast. Ah! <laughs> Oi! Somebody bring me a horse! The father, old Henry. Keep up! Keep up! If he gets away, I'll have you bollocks, every one of you. Come on! Powerful, angry, shrewd, always on the move, always one step ahead. He's mine! Find me my boar! Jealous of his powers as he gets older. One of you useless horses keep an eye on the boys. Sir. They get there first, God help you! Where? 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 Thirty stone of muscle and razor tusk. The bristles raise up along the spine. It doesn't like running, the beast. It prefers to turn on its pursuers and rip their guts out and plunge its snout deep in the steaming offal. The eldest son, young Henry, though everyone calls him Hal, knows what he wants, does Hal, but can't quite grasp it yet. Can you make anything out? It's down there in the thicket. It knows to choose the best ground. The second son, Richard. Yes and no, because you're never quite sure which way Richard will play it. Trust the old man to get the best run. He knows his business. And I don't. Did I say that? You didn't have to. Sitting talking whilst father gets the boar. The third boy, Geoffrey. Clever as a weasel is Geoffrey. Loves mischief more than profit, and Geoffrey likes profit very much indeed. Wait! Hal! Hal! Wait! What? Uh, Richard, can we trust him? Can we trust Mother? Uh, yes, she hates the old bastard more than we do. Then we can trust Richard, but if we lose her... We lose him. Yeah! Hal, then. Ambitious, impulsive, charming, persuasive, and determined to have what is his. Geoffrey, even at 16, sharp enough to cut the head off a man and leave him walking, because he didn't notice yet. Before God, he's mine! On, on, on! I have him! I have his trail! I have him! Come on, you sons of the devil! Let's see some blood! <laughs> By God's teeth, you're a big one! He's mine, Hal! Stay back! I got him first! Richard somehow believes the whole world is his by right of being... Bollocks to that chicken! I want this. I think the beast makes up its own mind. Once he goes, watch out. Stay back! Damn you, Hal! Damn you! The eldest goes first. Come on. Come on, you big ugly bastard. You're mine. We'll ride for him. See who he chooses. Now! Back you goddamn well. Back in mine! And always between the brothers and all they want, the father. He's mine! The two close. Weight of horse and rider, weight of beast, clash of man and animal. 
spear pierces flesh, bristles run red, and beast turning spear breaks, tusks rip, horse leaps, blood streaming. Sword flashing, cuts gristle, cuts spines. Boar turns at bay now, offers up his throat to his master. Death. Oh, well done, father. Good kill. I fought well. Quite the hero. What do you say, brothers? He was mine. He was mine. He is mine. You see that, all of you? Mine. Learn the lesson of the day, boys. An ordinary family, then. Father against sons. Sons against... Father? Father? Sir, I have come. Your Majesty? Well? I have come. I can see you have come. You are here. How else could you be here unless you have come? <laughs> Did I say something amusing? Did I? No, sir. I, I, Musicians, I, I, what do I pay you? <clears throat> what? Uh, for, for the, uh, you pay them two shillings a year, sir. Two shillings a year? Well, had you not better start earning your two shillings? Play! Play! You are giving my inheritance, my lands, away to John. I will not have it. Indeed, you will not, since your little brother will have it. <laughs> Besides... He needs it for this marriage I have in mind, his portion. The child has nothing on his own. The land is mine. I will not be treated like a boy. Like a girl, then? Henrietta? <laughs> will you dance with me? Why, aren't you pleased to see me? Sweet heart. <laughs> come, come, dance with me. Enough. Stop it. Stop it, father. I came here to talk to you as son to father, and this is how I am treated. It is long past the time when I should have stood beside you as your heir. As the future king of Anjou in England, it is long past the time when... when... what? You could wear my ring? You're not man enough to wear my ring! I have a right! Whilst I am king, you have what I choose to give you, and today I give you... <laughs> Enough. Go away. I have real business to conduct. Go! The Devil's Brood? <laughs> Did I mention that? Ha <laughs> ha, well, here's a story about these Angevins, these uh, charming people, these exemplars of family life. It's said that one of the Counts of Anjou married a woman of great beauty. Her name was Melusine. She was the perfect mother to his four children. The perfect wife, the perfect bedmate. The two are not always the same, believe me. But Melusine was perfect in every way. Except one. She would not attend Mass. Or if for some reason she was forced to do so, she always found an excuse to leave before the consecration of the host. Now, like most men, this duke was quite unable to leave well enough alone. He thought of a plan. He insisted his wife accompany him and the children to mass one morning. And just as the host was to be consecrated, just as Melusine made her excuses, four men at arms stepped forward to block her way. Now, thought the duke, now. And taking the two children closest to her by the hands, Melusine rose up, up above the congregation and flew away out of a window. Flew, it is said, all the way back to hell where her father ruled and rules yet. The two remaining children, grandchildren of the devil, founded... Ah! from seeing his father. The Plantagenet dynasty. Bertrand? Bertrand! Bastard has me by the balls and will not let go. The king has you by the wallet, Hal. That too. How long before you were shouting at each other? Oh, about time to draw an arrow, knock and fire it. 
If you were really fast. <laughs> if you'd had one. Oh, I would have tried it, I'm sure. Except that Marshall was there. Oh, the perfect knight without reproof. I like him. I really do. When he isn't strutting. Like a man with a lance up his arse, eh? <laughs> <laughs> he can be pompous, but he's one hell of a fighter. You should like him for that. Yeah, I prefer war to peace, that's for sure. But this is a world of pain. If we ignore it, we do so willfully, stupidly. And besides, watching all you little foxes turn on each other... So far, Bertram, but no further. Remember who you are and who I am. I love it when I see power changing hands. An old man forced to give up his lands, to divide them all between his heirs, each one certain that this is theirs. But then what is man? Come to think of it, what is he worth in this world? I think your poems go better to music, Bertram. Music is honey to sweeten <laughs> hard truths, Hal. You are a king in waiting. Without power, without a kingdom, without much of an army... I that... know what I am, Bertrand. And I know what I would be. Then maybe it's time to listen to a poet. And think the unthinkable. If you want to get anything out of the king, then you're going to need your brothers, Hal. Oh, must I? Richard is... Yes and no. But he can lead men. He's lucky, and he's a winner. And as we all know, God goes with the winner. Otherwise, they wouldn't win. He's only 19, Bertrand. Then you should have no trouble controlling him. And Geoffrey, too? Definitely Geoffrey. He's a young weasel, and you'll need his cunning. Just make sure he doesn't bite you. Can it be arranged? Anything can be arranged. Then do it. We'll meet in Paris. Well, there he is. Young Hal, the first son of the old king. King Henry, the second of that name by grace of God. Though sometimes you might think of God and the king as two boars pissing out the same territory, neither quite sure enough of his strength to take on the other. <laughs> but before Paris, let's go to Aquitaine and see what Richard Yes and No and Geoffrey the Weasel have to say about it all. You ride like a priest, brother. <laughs> and you make unfunny jokes, brother. <sighs> But I forgive you, because I am a man of great compassion. Which is why I have answered your call. Compassion be buggered, brother. Oh, Dickon. You want something. Why else would you be here? On the contrary, Richard. Geoffrey suspects that you want something, and he wants you to owe him for that something. <laughs> ah, the Queen. Eleanor of Aquitaine. The greatest lady of all Anjou in England. She loves music and poetry. She loves life and living. But she does not love her husband, the king. Mother, you're looking more beautiful and younger with every passing year. No, I'm not, Geoffrey. I'm looking older because I'm getting older. Come, walk with me. I'll show you the battlements. Mother, why on this good earth would I want to look at the battlements? Because walls have ears, Geoffrey, and up there, there is only the sky. And the angels. Don't forget the angels. Brother, you climb like a priest too. One more word out of you, Richard, and I'll start a rumour that William Marshall unhorsed you at the Reims tour. They'd never believe you. He's old. At least 30. It could happen. If the two of you ever squared up. You're too clever for your own good, Geoffrey. How often have I told you? Good has nothing to do with it. Enough. You both need to grow up. Hal wants you both in Paris. <laughs> Geoffrey, he wants to talk. He wants to do a lot more than talk. What do you say, Geoffrey? Oh, brother Hal is angry with the king because he has no power, no money, no lands to call his own, no rents to pay his retinue, and no assurance that he is the heir to the thrones of Anjou and England. Hal wants a proper statement as to who stands where, and your father will never give that away. If you want it, you'll have to take it. Look. Out there, both of you. Look at Aquitaine. The land. Think of Brittany. 
of Normandy, of all we own. That's what we stand to gain. Or lose. What does father say? The king knows nothing about it. And we need to keep it that way. I have you! Ah, the king, old Henry. You have my buckler, sir. Look to yourself. And his man, William Marshall. Best, toughest, hardest, most honourable ass-kicking knight in Christendom. Well, some say. Me? I hate the man and his decency. It's a reproach to the way things are in this world. He's just too... Good. You can show me that new charger they're all talking about. They say its lines are something special. Oh, they ought to be, the amount I paid for the beast. You'll make it up next tournament. That is how I make my living. Bring him. Easy, boy. Easy. Magnificent, Marshal. Uh, look at the power and the cropper there. And the lines. They were right about the lines. And are they right when they say my son, Hal, has hired you to fight for him in the Paris Tournay next month? Would that be right, too? Well, he has put out feelers, sir, and made me an offer. Good offer? I lead. I keep the ransom for any knight I take personally. He keeps half whatever his people put in. With you leading, they'll do well enough. Yeah. That would be enough for the boy. Oh, he's your son. Take him away now. How's a good boy in many ways? Then could you not take him a little more into your confidence? Hal wants to be king. He will one day. Why not give him the chance to learn now? He will be if I make it so. But well, there's Richard, impulsive but impressive already, and John, a baby, yes, but there's something about that child. And Geoffrey? The weasel is far too clever for his own good. He'd soon tie himself in knots. But if you trust them instead of playing them, they are boys. They are young, but... They... Their mother would break up this empire with a flick of her fingers if it ensured her beloved Aki Ten and her beloved Richard prospered. Eleanor is, you know, Marshal, she's almost as shrewd as I am. <laughs> you must be my eyes. Uh, go to this so-called secret meeting in Paris. Speak to Hal. Advise him. Warn him. Do not make an enemy of me. Thus, Paris and the meeting. Brokered by the French King Louis, who would like nothing better than a war between father and sons, so he might enlarge his own kingdom. <laughs> I love it. And things go to hell. <laughs> well, Richard, what do you think? I think Hal is still a boy to him. I'll show you the boy, Richard. You have no lands, no powers, no armies. You can hardly pay your own people. Father knows what he's doing. He's keeping you as a youth. As, call it what you will, Hal, and fight who you may in the eyes of the world, you are the boy. And you are not. I have Aquitaine. Geoffrey has Brittany. Oh, well, Dickon, you have been doing your homework. <laughs> and father has your betrothed wife in his care and is up her skirts whenever the Clifford bitch is unavailable. And do you know what, Dickon? I'd rather be a boy than cuckolded by my dad. You'll take that back, Hal, by God's teeth. The brothers are always testing themselves against each other. That's natural. But when the father shows his preference for the youngest and least deserving, your father has behaved dishonourably in this matter. Come on! He killed an archbishop! <laughs> Honour isn't really very high on his roster of important things to get right. He <laughs> may not care, but the people do. They loved Beckett. Actually, no, they didn't. They, they knew nothing about him until after he ate the blade. Father did his reputation a great favour. Never mind the badge sellers outside Canterbury. <laughs> if we act together and present our united demands to Henry, he will have to listen or raise an army. And an army costs money. And we know how he hates to spend money. <laughs> He'd have to raise taxes in England for any sustained effort, and 
With Beckett's blood still on the stones, no taxes. I hear they repaint it every night. <laughs> Don't you believe in anything, Geoffrey? <laughs> Who knocks? Let him enter in peace. Marshal! Henry's attack dog. He wouldn't say that to his face, though. <laughs> Have you been following our spore, William? I come in friendship, gentlemen. Richard, you filled out. We must try a pass or two together. Hal, as always, I am at your service. Hello, Sir Knight. Dented any good helms recently? My Lord Geoffrey, I see you've also filled out. Though a little more around the waist. <laughs> <laughs> I come to offer my services to Hal and happily acknowledge him as son... What he is? Or what he would be. Hello, Marshal. Good to see you. The Bourne. Still making music, or is it mischief? <laughs> you do come from my father. Hmm. We'll talk together later. Marshal looks thirsty. I think a drink is in order. Oh. There is wine here. Uh, if you will excuse us, sir. <clears throat> Richard, Geoffrey, we'll meet later. <laughs> drink up. <laughs> it's on me. <laughs> oh, I love this stuff. Do you really want to give up your youth, your freedom so soon? I want what's mine. I want another drink. <laughs> More ale here. I want to be treated with respect. Now, how long have we known each other? Hmm? A while, that's for certain. Mm. We've had good times, good fights. Oh, you're still the best, Marshal. Always will be. Though Richard's good already. He might even be better than you one no. day. But not this day. Besides, hmm. you were my pupil. <laughs> not that good a pupil. But not bad. You have an arm and you can carry a lance. Does this mean you'll fight for me at the Paris tournament? If you want, yes. <laughs> what does Father say about that? Well, he's not pleased, but he thinks I might be able to... Talk some sense into me? <laughs> he always thought I lacked it. What I really lack is a kingdom, an exchequer, a court. And I mean to have those things. They will come. Can you promise me? Give me your famous word that it will be so? Hmm? <laughs> Do you remember when the Flemings were holding me because of debts I'd run up? Well, they wouldn't let you leave the city. And you came. More ale! And sat there on your horse and told them, the debts will be paid. I give my word. And they let us go. They let you go. Can you give me your word, William? that those things will come to pass. I can only give you my word, Hal, not the King's. Then do this for me, William. Knight me. Well, doesn't the King intend that Louis should do that? A matter of policy. I don't want him to do it. I want you to do it. Yeah. Not as much as I can fight, <clears throat> you taught me. And I grant you, sometimes you can be the most annoying of men, but I do <laughs> trust you. And I do like you. And I do believe you like me. And I know you'll have to pay for this. The king will not be happy. Will you do it? Yes. It would be my honor to knight you. But for now, let's get as pissed as bishops. <laughs> oh. <Royal! laughs> Ow. <laughs> Ow, that hurts. Oh, prime. It must be prime or maybe tat. I don't know. The place looks empty. Did we really drink that much? I think so. My bladder tells me so. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. It's my wall, you're the what did he say? I think he said it's his wall. We know it's your wall, citizen. And in the future, you can set up the place for pilgrimage. The King of England pissed here! Well, since you like it so much, have some of that piss! I need sleep. Oh, I need there sleep. you are. Here we are, Richard. <laughs> oh, you stink. 
both of you. We had an encounter with... Never one... mind that. <laughs> I don't... Just be quiet, you pair of fools. <laughs> Look, you... <laughs> He's got her. What? Who? Our bloody father. He has mother. She was coming to us here. A message was sent. Who sent it? Did father send it? I don't know. She put on disguise and set out for Paris. And he took her and now he has her. That's why he sent me here. To get you out of the way. Exactly. By God, I tell you this, the old bastard is still smarter than the rest of us put together. And I tell you another thing, I won't underestimate him again. Geoffrey, what news? Oh, someone just emptied a piss pot in here. Oh. oh, good morning, brother. Marshal. Look, I've seen Louis. If we make our duty to him, he'll act with us. Together we can still do it, even without Mother. Wait, we need to consider... We needed to consider last night. Last week, even. Now it's too late. We act or we're finished. Well, Marshal, am I to be knighted today? You made a fool of me too. You are. There's only one thing. One more thing, Marshal. What if he kills her? I love it when I see power changing hands. An old man forced to give up his lands, to divide them all between his heirs. Each one certain that this is theirs. And aboard a ship bound for England. That woman who is not subject to her husband violates the condition of nature, the command of the apostles and the law of the gospel. For it is said in these matters, the man is the head of the woman. And the cod is the head of the man. And I'm not talking about fish. With your woman's way and childish counsel, I quote the Archbishop of Rouen, madam, you provoke offence against the king, to whom even the strongest king's necks must bow. He's talking about God. I know what he's talking about, Henry. You should return with your sons to your husband, who you are obliged to obey and live with. Wouldn't that be a bit upsetting for Rosamond? Might she not feel the sting of her position as the king's whore? Rosamond has nothing to do with this. Well, for once you're right, Henry. I'm usually right, actually. No, you're usually stronger, crueler, faster, and a good deal trickier than anyone else. But not this time. I doubt your cause will prosper, Eleanor. Once they hear about you being arrested in men's clothes, what's that if it's not unnatural and against nature? <laughs> Maybe nature doesn't agree. Truce. For the voyage to England. We did talk once, Eleanor. We were never lovers, I grant you, but we did talk once. Hmm? England. No sun to speak of. No music. No poetry. And full of Englishmen. And women. How is the fair Rosamond? Still getting bastards for the king? Not that you were ever loath to populate the land. Oh, not that you were loath yourself to enjoy... Oh, how should I put it? Lovers would do. A lover. And not when I married you. Louis was never the man you are, Henry. Flattery? Merely an observation. In the spirit of truth. Or perhaps truth. Always playing with words, you Aquitanians. It's how we are. But words, advice can be dangerous when spoken in the wrong ears. Hal knows his mind. Certainly Richard does. He wants to go on crusade. Oh, we also we want to go on crusade. We rarely do, unless we need something from the Pope. Like forgiveness? We all need that too. Especially those of us who kill archbishops. I liked him. Beckett? Then God help those you don't like. We got on. We... We were like brothers in many ways. I seem to recall that neither of you could take a joke. Kings make jokes. They don't take them. <laughs> you remember Beckett's robe? 
the ermine and red velvet, the whole works. Best robe in the kingdom, and we were riding to council, and some priest is going on about the virtues of charity, and Thomas says, Indeed, it is as hard for a camel to get through the eye of a needle as a rich man to get into heaven. You know that holy thing he did with his mouth? Made it look like a dog's ass. <laughs> and then we see this beggar, absolutely disgusting, sores, bleeding stump, the whole works, and I grab Tom's robe and say, why, this poor fellow needs it more than you on a cold day like today. <laughs> he wouldn't let it go. His hands froze, the way they do on your sword hilt after a whole day's tournament. You can't open your hand, man and weapon are one. Man and ermine cloak were one. He couldn't do it. I don't remember that. I wasn't there. Maybe not. But I looked into his eyes now, both of us holding the cloak, and I saw just how stubborn he was. <laughs> what did you do? I let go with one hand. He thought he'd won. Oh, the smile he was trying not to show, <laughs> until my right hand closed round his balls and I squeezed. And you know, he may have been a celibate. I really think he was celibate by then, but he still valued them more than the cloak. He cried out, fell off his horse, and I threw the cloak to the beggar. <laughs> I think Tom had him killed later, but he never wore the cloak in my presence again. There can only be one king in this kingdom, Eleanor. Not everyone agrees, Henry. The boys have a lot of support in Anjou, Brittany, Normandy... Aquitaine. Yes, and England, too. People are sick of your rules, your endless laws and statutes, the way you... What was it Beckett said? That man's more slippery than Proteus. You don't treat the boys as they think they should be treated. And they're going to do something about it this time. And holding me won't make any difference. Hal is attracting support. You know how they flock to Richard. And Geoffrey could sell sin to a saint. They're good boys, all of them. You're about to go to war with them, and they're good boys. Well, they're doing what they do. What are you going to do, Henry? What do you think I should do? You should talk to Hal. Hmm? You don't have the support to fight a real war. I certainly don't want to, but if I must... England I... is against you. They won't forgive you for Beckett. And they won't pay for your armies. If I talk to Hal now, it would be from a position of weakness. At least you'd still have a position. I fear that. My weakness for them. My love for them, if you like to call it so. Love is fine for poets, but it makes kings weak. I cannot afford to be weak. <laughs> what about me? Exile in England. Not too close a confinement. You're still the queen, for as long as I'm king. And how long will that be? You've some trick in mind, haven't you? Well, it makes you think so. Because that's what I'd do. Sometimes even the biggest, meanest old boar has to give a little ground if it gains him the day in the long run. A boar in a cathedral, in sackcloth, scattered with a few ashes. Sir Abbot, a word with you. Sire, I am at your command. As we are at the command of God. So we are, sire. And we must make reparation for our sins. So we must, sire. And I have committed a very big sin indeed. So you have, sire. And we agreed on the penance. So we did, sire. And the privileges and rights to be granted to Canterbury and its chapter. So they are, sire. And your monks have their scourges and their knouts. So they do, sire. And they are ready to begin. So they are, sire. And I don't need to remind you, Sir Abbot, that it is the king's back you will be scourging and nutting. So, indeed, sir, the king's back. There must be blood, but not too much. Mm. The king must still be the king. Do you understand? 
out. Exactly so, my lord. So, shall we get to it? Heated what? Penance. How? Penance. Actually flogged. Well, my sources say it was more in the way of uh, a knouting. Oh, a knouting. That's all. And some scourging, too. In public? In Canterbury, at the doors of Beckett's own house. Then a public mass, letters from the Pope, prayers... More penances, a promise to follow the cross to Palestine. Not while I'm there, I hope. Well, not ever knowing him. <laughs> well, there was talk of some business that needs to be settled first. That would be us. It would be. And mother? Uh, exile in Salisbury. God, that dreary hole. We need to ensure our people are firm of resolve. Geoffrey, can you get back to Brittany, Normandy, speak to our supporters there, stiffen their resolve? How? I'll go to Paris, see Louis. We know he's solid, but let's be double certain of it. Richard, you go to Aquitaine. I'll raise men. We still have the advantage, even if he does have English gold behind him now. How could he do it? On his knees in front of a cathedral? Well, I'd do it, if it meant saving my crown. Not that I actually have one, but if I did... Do we still go forward? Oh, we've gone too far to be stopped now. It's all or nothing. All, all or, or nothing. nothing. But the old boar has used those tusks of his to toss the world in the air, and now it lands quite upside down. In the name of a penitent king, the English are happy to be taxed and to serve in his armies, too. Ah, the family. Together again. How heartening. Hal? Father? Richard? You're filling out. I hear good things about you. Then you'll release Mother. Ah, still the same hothead. Geoffrey. Father, how good to see you well. And looking younger by the year. Sit, all of you. Marshal skulking outside, is he? I asked him to knight me as a favour. Well, he made his choice. Besides, with him in England, maybe someone else will have a chance to shine in tournament. One gets tired of the same old faces, don't you think? It's time for a new champion. Time for change, Father. Time to settle a few things. Firstly, are we clear that your rebellion, shall we call it that, is over? <clears throat> your supporters are melting away in the face of my forces. What skirmishes have been fought... ...are undecided. ...which allows you to keep your self-respect in some sort of order. But as far as anything means anything, it's over. Yes? Now that you have England, it's over. For now. For good and all. The barons who joined you will lose whatever castles that stand on their lands. Prisoners will be returned, except your mother. She'll stay in Salisbury. Henry, I'll make you an allowance, 15,000 Angevin a year, plus two castles in Normandy. I will also agree to call on you, when the circumstances are appropriate, to lead our forces in battle. You will have an official position at the head of the army. In addition, I will seek your advice on matters of policy. You will have a seat on the council. Very good. Richard, I want you back in Aquitaine. There's still unrest there, and you are your mother's son as much as mine. Go, talk to them, advise them, persuade them that peace and amity is the better course of action, and if they do not agree, come down on them like the wrath of God. Or the king. Same thing. Very good, father. And Alice? You will settle Aquitaine, and then we'll settle the marriage business. Geoffrey. <clears throat> Half the revenues of Brittany, and as soon as you get married to, uh... Constance. A suitable name for our family. You'll get the whole thing and whatever other titles are entailed. Very generous, Father, considering. I have also some gifts, entails and land I wish to give to John. He's still a child. Does he really need more? He needs what I choose to give him. So... Is it agreed? How? Agreed. Jeffrey. Agreed. Richard. 
Agreed. Then each of you give me the kiss of peace and we'll be done. Done? <laughs> oh no, there's still all to play for in this game. As long as the king rules, then they will be at him. Like dogs running down the boar. But which of them... Will have the courage to kill me? None, I think. Not one. How? As always, he gives me everything but gives nothing. A seat on the council, but I'll just happen to be somewhere else when they sit. Advice? I don't think so. A handful of gold and a couple of castles. Geoffrey? Is it weakness or strength? He bends like a longbow to send a yard through our guts. Love him, hate him, but learn from him. Richard. Peace is no condition for a man, and when I am a man, he will answer for mother. He will answer for everything. The Queen. The secret is still to be here. Not to go, not to die, but to endure. So, time passes. The boys grow up. Henry gets older. Eleanor abides and promises Promises wither like autumn fruits left too long on the branch. And in time, they fall. Faultworth. Get this off me. And call the blacksmith. Don't let anyone else get to him first. And Hal, still short of money, is on the tournament circuit trying to make a living. Bertram, what are you doing here? I came to see you fight, Hal. <laughs> Have some wine. I did well today. Easy money? <laughs> I'm never sure if they're flattering me or if I really do defeat them. But in the end, is there a difference? Well, William Marshall would say there was. Well, Marshall is in England, and the King has banned tournaments there, so no doubt he's ploughing his fields. I hear he's doing quite well. well you hear a lot, Bertram. Uh, it's a poet's job to hear the way the world goes <laughs> under heaven. And then to lie about it. <laughs> to paint it in bright colours. And what have you brought me? News of Richard. Ah, the great brick Jakes. What's he up to? Building castles. Castles in the air, are they? Still set on following the cross to the Holy Land? Why well, hasn't he stamped hard enough on the locals down there in Aquitaine yet? A castle in uh, Clairvaux, actually. What? Clairvaux. That's my land. With an impregnable castle stuck on a rock in the middle of the place, I'd say it was more likely Richard's. God's teeth, Bertrand. Does he think he's going to get away with that? He's got an army in Aquitaine, trained, fed and watered, and you, my lord, <laughs> haven't. So I would say, as of today, yes, he does. What do I do, Bertrand? What can I do? Don't complain of yes and no. Wait while summer turns to snow and turns again to summer's heat. Then... Hal and Richard meet, each on his metal, scores to settle. You tell me to wait. What do you think I am? I tell you nothing. I think you are the king in waiting. <sighs> but uh, what I advise... That bastard horse son Richard thinks he can strut his way through the whole bloody world and everyone is going to... What do they call him? Those bloody mercenaries he employs. What do they say? Uh, Lionheart. They call him Lionheart. Bloody ass for brains. Horse on pot sucking. Man shagging. Leper loving. God! I only advise. Uh... Why? Why did he do it? He thinks he is a destiny. He thinks he's better than the rest of us. What is a man in this world? What he thinks he is or what others think him? Do you know chess, sir? No. Never had time for it. Sometimes, when one is not sure what to do, how to attack, it's best to wait, play safe, let your opponent move, and uh, sooner or later he'll make a mistake, and that is your moment. I've been waiting my moment for a long time, Bertrand. It will come. How? But when? Master poet, when? Within a year and a half. Because in this world, ruled as it is by the Lord of Misrule, 
You seldom have to wait very long for the worst to happen. Welcome, Hal, welcome. Father, you called. I am here. I need your help. Yes? I need you to lead an army to Aquitaine and assist your brother. Richard needs help. I think he's been a little too vigorous in putting down those barons opposed to our rule. You know how it is sometimes, over-enthusiasm. Leading to defeat. That cannot happen. The family must be invincible. We may fight amongst ourselves, but when it comes to the world, we stand together, we stand for the empire we have made. Richard is in trouble. And you want my help? I do. Can I trust you, Father? Good news or bad, Sir William? I'm a bird of ill omen, madam. A bird who flies in the evening. I go to France by the next good wind. Sailing with the wind for once. The king has called me. Well, Henry would never call you to make posset or blow more, so... <laughs> is it the boys again? Yes. What's Hal done now? The king gave him an army, told him to go and help Richard establish order. Instead, he and Geoffrey are creating disorder. They're an occupying force. They've already taken the castle at Clairvaux. They're laying waste as they go, living off the land. Men say they're worse than the plague. My poor Aquitaine. The plague. And civil war. No, Henry will never allow it. He may never forgive them, either. He wants me to talk to Howe, make him see sense. But I think he can only see the king preferring Richard, just as he did with John before. Do you think I was wrong to support them? I think you did what you did, madam. I think the king was ahead of us all. <laughs> How long can he keep up the pace? Whilst he has breath. But there will come an end to it. There's an end to everything except God's mercy. Do what you can. I don't want my boys killing each other. I don't want them killing their father. Or him killing them. It may have gone too far for any of us. In that case, it is in God's hands. So many sons, that this poor singer would think one, at least, must be some good. And Hal does so very much want to be the good son to his father. And, I believe, the old king wants to be the good father to his son. And yet, they face each other. One standing proud on the battlements of Clairvaux, the other beyond the moat, looking up. And I catch his eye. Father and son. He won't do it. He'll never attack. He's very angry, Hal. He might. Richard might drive him on, and Richard is very, very good at taking castles. Richard is very, very good at taking what isn't his, but he's not taking this castle back whilst I live. We need to bring up siege engines, Father. Can we do it? You built this place, Richard, to withstand anything you could bring against it. To stand here is weakness. To attack and fail is to show God has abandoned the king. That will never happen. We wait. He'll come. He must come. He'll hold. He can't show weakness. <laughs> Where's William Marshall when you need him, Al? I rather fancy seeing him and Richard face off. Maybe they could settle this thing by combat, eh? <laughs> How? How? God's teeth. What are they doing? Are they coming out to fight? I think they're coming out to surrender. Then in God's name, why? Who wins and who loses in this world? Sometimes King Henry, and sometimes King Pest. Who comes? I said only the monks should. Oh, I'm done with.
this world. Perhaps the world is not done with you, Hal. Marshal. Where have you come from? From England. From your mother. You come too late. The doctors... No, nothing. My heart tells me where I am going. <coughs> Marshal. I have a task for you. Will you accept it? Will you be my champion in this thing? Always, Hal. Always. Don't worry. It's not too far a journey. Why, it's hardly more than the room next door. It's a trick, this sickness. He asks that you go to him, sir. He wants your forgiveness. He couldn't hold the castle. Gave it up without a fight. He can't face the shame of losing to me, Marshal. That's his sickness. I have seen him. You have not. He is in great pain, but will not let go until you stand by him. His king and his father. Richard, give us the room, will you? Is it true? I do not lie. You know it, sir. Oh, God help me. He has caused me so much trouble, this boy, and yet, Marshal, I wish to God he could live and cause me more. It is what we are, this devil's brood of ours. We turn on each other, drive each other on. We love and hate and envy and fear and despise each other because... I cannot walk those few steps to where he lies. Go to him. There is nothing left of this world in your son. All the anger, the ambition, the pride, all of it gone. And yet he turned against me, my eldest. What was he to do, sir? How could he live up to you without trying to throw you down? You made him what he is. And God made me king. And I will not let that go. Man and weapon, one thing. King and man, one thing. God and king, one thing. Then step down for a space and show him forgiveness and love. Love in a king is weakness, Marshal. If they see me go to him, they will see me weak and weeping. That can never happen whilst my kingdom stands. Is that your final word, sir? Do not question me. I recall that you sided with the boy. Because I care for him, my heart led me to his side. I never betrayed you, and I will not apologize for my heart's words to any man on this earth. If I could, I would have ripped out my heart long ago. A king has no business with such a thing. Now, leave. Do what you can, and I will do what I must. Wait! Give him this. Father, is he here? He has not come, Hal. I should not have asked it then. He sent his ring. And he sent his blessing and his forgiveness. Well, put the ring on my finger. I will deliver it. I should have listened to you more and to others less. It was as God makes it, Hal. We do what we can in this world. I, as God begins it, so he ends it. And then it is. Si 
Sineres, Sineribus, Pulverem, Pulveri, Comitimus. And as for what a man is in this world, the would-be King Hal, who will remember him if I do not? In grief and pain and full of tears, the lovers and the singers, the good knights too, the friends and the enemies of all his years, have found in death a deadly foe who has taken from us the young king England never had. And the best in this world will be forever sad and mourn the passing of this golden... My lord, yes and no. Welcome. I was about to... Leave. Your castle and your lands are now the property of King Henry II. And I? What am I to do? You're a writer, aren't you, Deborn? Go and write something. Yeah! In Plantagenet, What is a Man by Mike Walker, King Henry II was played by David Warner, Queen Eleanor by Jane Lapotere, Prince Hal by Piers Weiner, Prince Richard by Joseph Cohen Cole, and Prince Geoffrey by Rhys Jennings. William Marshall was played by Stephen Hogan, King Louis of France by Philip Fox, and Bertrand de Bourne by Bruce Alexander. Other parts were played by John Biggins. The director was Jeremy Mortimer.